For this example, we're going to utilize the two different limit definitions of the derivative to compute the derivative of the function f of x equals x cubed at the x value x equals 1. So notationally, what it is we're looking for is f prime of 1. f prime is the function, that's the derivative function, and we're going to be evaluating that at the um, x value that's given there. So f prime of 1 is what we're going to be looking for, and for this first part a, we're going to be utilizing the uh, limit as h goes to 0 definition. And that uh, difference quotient that is involved for this definition is the f of the x value given, 1, plus the h, minus the f of the x value given, which is 1, and all over h. So we need to be able to um, compute the f of 1 plus h and f of 1 uh, as our next step. So we have the limit as h goes to 0. And the way that we compute this is, um, what I always suggest is take the function um, that you're given and everywhere you see an x, replace it with a set of parentheses. And so uh, we have the uh, parentheses there. Um, in place of the x and we put um, that empty set of parentheses uh, cubed because the thing that lands in that empty set of parentheses is what's in parentheses in the notation f of 1 plus h here. So the 1 plus h that's in parentheses lands in the parentheses there. Okay. Then whatever follows the um, subtraction sign is the other function or the function with the um, value plugged in. Now be aware that uh, if that function has more than one term, like this one doesn't, it's just the single term x cubed. But if your function has more than one term that are separated by addition and subtraction, you're going to need an extra set of parentheses here because that subtraction sign is going to have to be distributed. But since this particular uh, function is a single term, we can do the same sort of thing where we have these empty parentheses cubed as our template for the f of x function, and what we insert inside is what's in parentheses. In this case, it was 1, and that's all over h. So now we're looking at uh, being able to simplify the top Notice I'm keeping this uh, limit notation all throughout, but I'm looking to simplify the top because ultimately to be able to take this limit, the h needs to cancel, the h that's on the bottom there needs to cancel with a common factor of h that eventually needs to be pulled out of the top. So we need to do a simplification of the top. So to simplify this, we're going to have to cube out the one plus h. Now that, um, means that we would have to take the factor 1 plus h and multiply it by itself where we'd have th three copies of it. Um, you can also use something called Pascal's triangle uh, to help you be able to multiply uh, this binomial raised to the third power out uh, more quickly. And so let me tell you a little bit about Pascal's triangle. It starts with uh, just a triangle of ones and then in each line, you um, have as the outer, the first and the last um, entry being uh, the ones that you just throw in there. And then the middle entries are gotten by adding the um, two that would go above it. So we've got the one plus one um, giving us a two there. So those would be kind of the coefficients if you were squaring something. The next line is going to be the coefficients if you cube something. You throw the 1 at the beginning and the end, and then you look at sums for each um, pair in the middle. So we've got the 1 plus 2 is the 3, and then the 2 plus 1 is the 3. So this is the line that you get, or that you're utilizing for coefficients whenever you're cubing out a binomial like this. So here's what it looks like. Uh, the first coefficient in Pascal's triangle is a 1, and so that 1 would accompany the first term in the binomial raised to the third power. So that first term there is a 1 because we've got the 1 plus h, so it would be 1 cubed. Uh, we follow that up with the uh, second coefficient there in the Pascal's triangle, and that's the 3, and this time we multiply that by uh, not 1 cubed, but rather we drop the power on that first term by 1, so it's 1 squared. But we also have to throw in um, an h. h is that second term in the binomial. We've got the 1 plus h, and that's got to go uh, to the first power there. 
and we keep following this pattern. The next um, Pascal's triangle coefficient is 3. We multiply it by, now we drop the power on 1 to be to the first power, and we raise the power on the h to be the second power. And then lastly, we have the um, Pascal's triangle coefficient of 1, and this time uh, we've run out of powers there for 1. I mean, you could think about it being 1 to the 0 power, which would still just be 1. But we finish up now by having that second term raised to the third power. So that would be what we get if we cube out the uh, 1 plus h. And then, of course, we've got to, um, from that, subtract the uh, 1 cubed, which is simply just 1. And again, that's where you've got to be a little bit careful with um, distributing if that ends up being multiple terms. All right, so um, the top right now has been multiplied out, but it doesn't look very pretty. So let's make it look a little prettier. So we've got the limit as h goes to 0. And what we have is 1 cubed is 1, and then we've got 3 times 1 squared, uh, which would be 3 times h to the first, so that would be plus 3h. And then we've got 3 times 1 to the first power, so that would again be 3 times h squared, so that would be 3h squared. And then we have the h cubed minus the 1. All of that's over h. Now what happens, and what is always going to happen if we're going to be able to take this limit, is all of the uh, the constant terms are going to cancel. So we've got a 1 and a minus 1, and those are going to cancel. So the other three terms that are in the top actually each have a common factor of h that can be pulled out. And so what we have then is the limit as h goes to 0 of, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull out the common factor of h that's on the top, and that leaves me with uh, 3 plus 3h plus um, the uh, h squared. Okay? And uh, the bottom still has that uh, factor of h, but now we see that the h on the top and the h on the bottom are going to reduce out, leaving us with the limit as h goes to 0 of uh, the polynomial 3 plus 3h plus h squared. Okay, so now we can take this limit by plugging in, and um, we no longer are going to end up with an indeterminate form because we canceled out the zero that was going to be in the bottom, or the factor that was giving us zero in the bottom. So that leaves us with 3 plus 3 times 0 plus 0 squared, which we can compute out to be 3. Okay, so that would be the answer for the derivative of the function um, x cubed evaluated at the x value x equals 1. Now this was just part a. This was utilizing the h approaching 0 definition and we still have part b to go. We need to utilize the uh, z approaches c definition. And so uh, let's go through that. I think you'll see some of the similar sorts of things that have to happen through this uh, computation. Um, but depending on the setup, uh, that you choose, you've got a little bit uh, different algebra, or it, it plays out a little bit differently sometimes. Okay, so we've got um, f prime of 1 that we're still trying to find out, and this time we're going to use the limit as z approaches um, c. Well, the c here is 1 because that's the given value for x that they have. So the limit as z approaches 1 of f of z minus f of 1 over z minus 1. Okay, so that's the setup for what this uh, limit definition would be. And um, so what we need to do is, uh, again, just like the last time, we need to compute out uh, the top utilizing our function. And so f of z, really we're just replacing the variable x with the variable z. And so instead of x cubed, it would be z cubed. Um, to get f of 1, we're simply plugging in the value 1 to the function um, x cubed, so we would have 1 cubed. And then again on the bottom we've got the factor z minus 1. So at this point, um, in the other problem, we had to utilize Pascal's triangle to cube out uh, that first uh, function value. But this time we don't have to do that because um, our plug-in was actually somewhat simpler. Um, so really what we're looking at here is the limit as z approaches 1 of the top is z cubed minus 1 and the bottom is z minus 1. Okay? 
Okay, so now what we do have to tackle here is uh, the ability to factor. So we cannot uh, cancel ones and z's at this point because of the subtraction signs that appear on both the top and the bottom. That doesn't allow us to reduce at this point. To be able to reduce a fraction, you have to have factors, factors that are multiplied by other things on both top and the bottom that then reduce out. And right now we don't have that. So what we do need to know is how to factor. Um, and here for the factoring, uh, what we really have on the top is a difference of cubes. And so the difference of cubes, what you end up with is if you have a cubed minus b cubed. What you get for that factorization is uh, the first factor happens to be just dropping the cube part. So you've got the a minus b as the factor. But then the remaining factor ends up being um, a squared as the first term. You've got a b squared as the third term. And that middle term and it's, sorry, it's a plus b squared there is the third term. And that middle term is what you get when you multiply the, um, the first and the second thing together in, in that first factor. So we've got the a minus b. So it would be the product of those two things. So a times negative b. So that would be negative ab. Except we don't keep the negative. We switch the sign to positive. So it would be plus ab as the middle thing. In comparison, just since we're here, and you might as well learn this too, if we are um, factoring a sum of cubes, it would take the same sort of form where we have the a plus b, just dropping the cubes out um, for our first factor. Our um, in the second factor, our first term is still positive a squared, and our last term is still positive b squared. But the difference here is that cross term in the middle is um, the a times positive b, but then you switch the sign. So you've got positive ab that you switch the sign to be negative ab. Really just so that you can get everything to cancel that's in the middle if you were to multiply the right-hand side out um, so that you can match it to the left-hand side. So that's just a, a little side uh, note about how to factor both differences of cubes and sums of cubes. So we have a difference of cubes back here in this problem. So we've got the limit as z approaches 1, and the top there is a difference of cubes. So what we do is we have for our first factor just what we get if we drop the cubes. So that would be our z minus 1. The second factor that we would have on the top would be that first term squared, so that would be a z squared. And then the, the third term in that second factor would be the, um, the last thing in the, the, the b, um, but then we would square it. So we've got the, the negative 1 there squared would be the positive 1. Okay. The middle term is what you get when you multiply the two things together and switch the sign. So we've got z times negative 1, so that would be negative z, and you switch it to a positive z as the middle one. Okay. So that would be the factorization on the top, and we carry on the factor on the bottom, which we knew had to appear on the top because we know that that has to cancel if we're going to be able to take that limit. Otherwise, um, we've got a zero on the bottom, and really when you do these problems, you end up with a zero over zero situation, uh, indicating to you that you're going to have to do some sort of cancellation. So here we do see the z minus 1 factor on both the top and the bottom. On the top, it's a factor because that z minus 1 is multiplied by something else. So that leaves us with the limit as z approaches 1 of the polynomial z squared plus z plus 1. Okay, So we can make that computation um, by plugging in 1 for z to take the limit. So we drop the limit notation and we plug in 1 for z. So we've got 1 squared plus 1. Uh, and then plus the one that's at the end. So that would be 1 squared is 1 plus 1 plus 1. That's a total of 3. And that is what we got when we took this um, derivative using the h approaching 0 uh, limit as well. And so certainly we sh should, if we're going to be calculating the same thing, even using two different methods, we should be getting the same answer. And so here is an example where we do in fact get the same answer.